Santana, ¿por qué llora el niño por una manzana que se le ha perdido? Yo le daré una, yo le daré dos, una para el niño y otra para mí. Yo no quiero una, yo no quiero dos, yo quiero la mía que se me Every Cuban child has heard his mother sing a lullaby about a little boy who is crying. A kind lady, a stranger, asks him why he is crying. And the little boy says it's because he has lost an apple. An apple his mother gave him. That's why he is crying. This is Roberto. He is from Cuba. He is going to stay here a while. It's a refugee camp. Roberto is a refugee. When you are sent away to school for the first time, or you go away to camp, everything is strange. Everybody is strange. It's even more bewildering when your own mother and father have sent you from Cuba to the United States of America, to a strange country, all by yourself. This is the padre. He takes care of the whole camp. He is a refugee, too. It is hard to understand where you are and, and why you are here. You are not the only one all this is happening to. But the other kids from the plane you came over on are together. Everything is so official. Writing things down, making out papers. Just the way they did at the airport in Havana. Always asking questions. What's your name? Roberto Eduardo González. Roberto González Horta. Where were you born? In Havana. Havana. How old are you? Eight. Birthday? October 3rd. Any sicknesses? Measles? Whooping cough? Chicken pox? Uh, Scarlet fever? No. Operation? On my nose, yes. What school did you go to in Cuba? ES 41. First grade. Did you like school? Your father's name? Roberto González Cocho. Your mother's name? Vivi González. What does your father do? He is a bricklayer. How old is he? 38. And your mother? What does she do? She does the washing for other people. How old is she? 27. Do they have all their papers ready to come over? Do you think they will come? They'll come soon, I hope. You cannot stay here. Nobody does. This is just an in-between place where you wait until they find you a foster home somewhere in the United States. Everybody has to wait. 
when you are here, you will live in a cottage with other boys, all here alone like you, all waiting for a foster home. song your mother always sang. The kind lady says, don't cry little boy, I will give you another apple. And the little boy says, I don't want your apple, I want the one I lost. Why would papa and mama do this? How could they send you to a far and lonesome place where you have no friends? It's like the story about the dog who swam from Havana to Key West just to be able to bark a little. Sure, it's lonesome at first, but you'll make friends. Children always do. It only takes a little while to get used to living with a big family in a little piece of Cuba. Gladys hasn't been here much longer than you, but she's used to it already. Tonight is talent night. This is Dulce Maria. She is going to sing a song of the country people of Cuba. I dream of my homeland, my Cuba, of happier days in her valleys and her hills. Before the clouds of war darken her blue skies, the skies of my country are like a nest. Where the hopes of my people are waiting for Cuba to be born again and advance on the road of Martí. My song is the humble expression of a Cuban. Only a child who asks nothing more than love. My Cuba, my Cuban flag are to me the purest of gold. I ask no other treasure than to praise in my daily work my country's flag and the Cuba that I adore. I wouldn't want these amusements to make you forget altogether the crucial hour the world is going through. Your being here 
in Florida City. Bajo el cielo acogedor de Estados Unidos. Under the sheltering sky of the United States, far from the land where you were born, torn from the warmth of your parents, this is a constant reminder that there is something very wrong in the world. I'd like you to be boys and girls with a great sense of responsibility. There is a new society, a new world waiting ahead of you, a homeland that you have to build. And that new homeland, that new world, can only be built with new men. And that is what Cuba is waiting for from all of you. The Cuba of tomorrow hopes that you do not fall into the same errors that have caused the present tragedy. Let's pray that Our Lady of Charity may listen to our prayer, that the peace of the world, the dove of peace, may descend on our homeland and over the whole world. How did parents get their children out of Castro's Cuba when they themselves could not escape on special visas? Just before Papa and Mama took you to the airport, they told you exactly what to say to Castro's militia. You say, I am going to the United States to study. And that entitled you to a student visa. This, officially, is student. Children never think what they are taught in school can make much difference in what they will grow up to be. But parents know better. And in Cuba, when they saw their children taught strange things, they became frightened. That's the main reason they sent you here. So that you wouldn't be changed into strangers in your very home. Here in this school, you have to learn new things, new words for the time when you go to live with your new family, your foster family. But the very idea of going away to live with a strange family is alien to Cuban children. There isn't even a word in their own language for what they are all waiting for, a foster home. But there is a word in Spanish they do understand. The word for scholarship, going away to study. The word is beca. Someday, a beca will come for you. But until your beca comes, you have to learn to be patient and behave the way your parents would want you to do. There is a 
find another place like Florida City anywhere else in America. Still, it has an ordinary routine. Somebody's always finding something for you to do or thinking of things to do for you. Things to keep you happy. Things to keep you healthy. The people who take care of you are called house parents. They are from Cuba too. While you are here, they are papa, they are mama. Gladys is 12. In camp, they keep case reports. And hers says, Gladys is a healthy, well-integrated child, friendly and outgoing. She seems to have made an excellent adjustment to the situation. Serafina is almost five. Her report says she almost never smiles. The report on Gladys continues. Like so many of our children, Gladys has learned to do things.